guys, what's up? Welcome to this installment of Mike's Vehicle Vlogs, and I want to thank you for joining me today. Um, I still have bedhead. Um, <laughs> because uh, we're going to look into uh, a little more with this mass airflow sensor on the uh, Aztec this morning. I can already see the wasps are flying around. Yeah, of course they're flying on the tech and whatnot. Who knows? I hate them things. Um, anyway, so, yeah, this morning, we're going to try to do a little more work with the mass airflow sensor, look into this a little more, because, yeah, I got a wasp flying right around the door area here. Uh, we might actually take the car out, uh, just so maybe I could show you guys what's going on. Um, so anyway, in the last vlog, we ended up figuring out why uh, the Aztec had a rich uh, code, uh, a rich condition, and it was because the mass airflow sensor had been installed backwards, which is really bizarre because I didn't put the mass airflow sensor on when I had this engine apart. I put the... Um, when I, when I had it all apart, I left the mass airflow sensor hooked up to the air cleaner box and uh, I just took that whole thing off. So I had no idea it was even on backwards until just yesterday when I was, you know, we're trying to figure out why the tech is running rich and whatnot. So the mass airflow sensor has been installed backwards and uh, we corrected that issue. So, you know, after a while we, we let it run. We had the tech too, which I still have and we're going to use it today. Um, but we had the Tech 2 out, and we can see our fuel trims start to adjust accordingly. So we went from negative, you know, uh, the worst I think that it was at one time was negative 25% fuel trim, long term. And it's it was resting at about negative 4, negative 5% with a short term of around 0, 1, negative 1. Um, so that's pretty decent. Now we still have a misfire on 3, and it's not a constant misfire. It's a misfire that's coming and going. It's not a, like I said, it's not really a consistent miss. Um, so I was, I really wasn't gonna do a whole lot with that today. Um, and the reason why I'm out here so early doing all this is because they are saying again that we're supposed to have some severe storms this afternoon. So I wanted to try to get uh, as much of this, um, you know, figured out as, as I can before the weather starts turning. Uh, it is hot. The tech is saying it's at 89 degrees. I know it's been sitting here in the sun all morning, but I think outside our ambient temperature is about 75, if I'm not mistaken. So it is the perfect day for some sort of severe weather. So anyway, what I want to do now, and the reason why I'm telling you guys what's going on, is because I had the tech out yesterday after we had fixed our mass airflow sensor, uh, you know, I took it out for a drive, I tried to maybe hammer on it a few times to see if maybe now that it's not running as rich we can kind of either open up that maybe a sticking injector on cylinder 3 or maybe get that fouled plug to burn, you know, um, if it's fouled I'm assuming, you know. When I got back it was still missing, uh, but then, you know, I was taking it out after all that, you know, we went and got dinner with it. Uh, and. You know, I've noticed ever since we swapped the mass airflow sensor around, the transmission is acting differently. It's actually shifting really hard. And I do find that kind of weird that we, we switched our mass airflow sensor to the correct position and now my transmission in this thing is shifting like garbage almost. Um, I thought maybe at first the transmission may have had to relearn the load calculations and stuff from the correct position mass airflow sensor. Um, but it's, I don't know, it's, I'm honestly kind of afraid to drive it because I don't want to cause any more damage to the transmission. Because the transmission didn't run that bad didn't shift that bad at all actually the entire time I've been driving this thing uh, we've got uh, just almost 4,300 miles on this car since I've 
you know, put it together and had it on the road, you know, it's been on the road with me for 4,300 miles, and this transmission has never really acted up the way that it's acting up now. So this is my, this is my little hypothesis thinking going on. I have no idea how long that mass airflow sensor was sitting backwards on this car. Somebody at some point in time had it off. That may not even be the original one. Somebody probably replaced it earlier in its lifetime, um, but they put it on backwards. So who knows how long this thing's been on backwards. I'm going to guess maybe the mass airflow sensor is damaged um, from being in backwards. I don't know if that's possible. Um, the amount of air that goes in through the mass airflow sensor, you know, the, the way that the sensor is designed is it's almost kind of like a, um, a cone, almost like a funnel in a way. And the air, you know, filters through. There's a screen on one side, obviously, to, to kind of keep larger debris and stuff from getting in there. Um, this case, if it's backwards, you know, um, the screen is behind the sensor at that point and anything can flow in through the air filter if it you know gets by and the air filter on this thing when I bought it was awful so nobody changed the air filter and who knows how long but the air filter was awful um, who knows if what you know little things may have been hitting the uh, mass airflow sensor while it was backwards and now that it's forward and such, the way it should be, maybe it can't calculate correctly. So I don't know. That's just my mind thinking. Like I said, I do find it very, very strange that as soon as we switch our mass airflow sensor over, it does correct our rich trims, and I'm happy about that. But I just wonder when the car is on a load and you know the engine and airflow is increased, I wonder if that sensor is reading correctly under load. Uh, and it's probably tricking the PCM into telling the transmission, you know, the, the shifting sequences, you know. Um, so that's what we're going to do now. So um, I might take it out, you know, like I said, we'll take it out real quick. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll get it warmed up and whatnot. We'll get the Tech 2 hooked up. We'll look at some readings. I do have my uh, voltmeter here. Um, we're going to probe into the harness, you know, and see if the readings from our multimeter and the, the Tech 2 are reading the same. Uh, but what, what I'm basically looking for is when we give the accelerator slow acceleration of the engine, higher RPM, I wanna see if our voltage increases, if it stays steady, or if it glitches, if it drops down at some points, if it's kind of going up and down and whatnot, because then our sensor is weak and we're gonna have to replace it. Now, am I gonna buy a new sensor? No, not today. They're expensive. Um, but I will go to the junkyard and I'm sure I can find a mass airflow sensor to bring home and see if it acts any differently. Um, one that hasn't been on backwards, we could hope. <laughs> so it's just, a, you know, even if the, the junkyard one doesn't correct it all the way, you know, then maybe I'll give in and buy a new sensor, but they're expensive. Um, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. So let's hit the road real quick. I'll see if I can somehow get it on tape. Um, what, what, it, what, what, what it's doing basically is what I'm trying to say. Uh, that's really bizarre. So I really haven't had the shifting get harsh at all. It's really strange. Um, I'm starting to wonder now if maybe the transmission was just hot yesterday. Maybe, uh, I know it was, the Tech 2 was saying it was around 200 degrees. Um, so I don't know if maybe that's maybe what the issue is. Like I said, I know I kind of hammered on it a little more than usual yesterday. But so far, it's been, it's been fine, so let's... Oh, nope. Okay, so it's starting to get a little. All right, so yeah, so it's starting to get a little harsher as we go on. It is warm, guys. I don't have air yet in this thing. 
I'm just blowing in cold air right now because I didn't want the wind noise from the window being down. Yeah, now it's starting to get a little, a little harsh. Um, I'm also hearing a whine now. I wonder if the fluid and transmission got low somehow. I think uh, I think we're gonna check it as soon as we get back. I don't know how that would be. It's not leaking out of the pan or anything. It's been doing really well. At least I haven't seen unless something happened. You never know. So I guess we're, I'm just going to continue on with our, our testing. Uh, we'll go home, we'll check that transmission fluid level first, and then we'll hook up the Tech 2 and the voltmeter, and we'll just see if maybe there's any anomalies in the mass airflow sensor. Um, maybe it doesn't do it until, you know, the transmission is warm. Uh, that could be, I don't know. Uh, but we'll give it a shot anyway, we'll see what happens. Really not that that low. It's still in the hash mark. Yeah, I suppose I can maybe add a little more, but it's not really at the add mark. It is still sounding better than it was yesterday, uh, other than the fact that it's got that slight miss. But it, uh, I think it is sounding better. Yep, this little guy right here. So we'll go ahead, uh, hook the Tech 2 up here in a sec, and then we'll. Um, go from there I guess. Yep, this is what I gotta do. As much as I hate to do that to my beautiful car. But as soon as I pulled up here, he started eyeballing it. So I guess I have to be armed out here and now I got all this stuff on my car yeah I was watching him they start flying around the side and I think he's dead now all right anyway let's hook our stuff up get our readings all right so first off we don't have a service engine light but I want to see if we have any ETCs probably misfire might be sitting in there Engine oil pressure switch and that transmission code again P1811 maximum adapt and long shift. I might actually have to look up some code setting criteria for that. But no uh, random misfire yet. Fascinating. Yeah, well, three's at 22, 20, 24. All right, so yeah, so that one's still counting some misfires there. And our long-term fuel trim right now is at negative seven. All right. Let's see if I can find our 
This is gonna be hard to do today. So, eh. hold on. I wanted to see, I'm sure there's a PID in here for mass airflow voltage. Engine data one. Well, the mass airflow sensor is reading at three, about 3.6 grams a second. From my understanding, that's pretty normal. Still gotta look at our map sensor information. Might look at that too. I think that's it. So we are gonna probably have to hook up our voltmeter to see if our mass airflow sensor drops down any. Alright, so I pulled up a wiring diagram that you guys really can't see. So the mass airflow sensor is here. This is showing an air pump, but I didn't think this thing had an air injection pump. It might not, maybe, I don't know. Anyway, I'm not gonna worry about that at the moment. So the mass airflow, you can see our pink wire is gonna be our ignition voltage going up from the fuse block. Obviously we know the, we got voltage there because the sensor is working somewhat. The uh, wire here, black and white, that's the ground, and then this one here, our yellow wire, is going to be our signal wire, and that's the wire that's going to the PCM and commanding the PCM to control our air-fuel ratio. And the um, apparently the transmission load also. It all makes sense. So before I put the ignition back on, we're going to unplug our sensor. There's our wires there, signal wire, ground, ignition voltage. And yes, those terminals look good, by the way. Um, so I'm gonna take some paper clips and we're going to put them into the ground side and the signal side. And the signal side is gonna show us the voltage that's reading back to the um, PC, whoa. Let's see, they're back. PCM. And that's what I want to look for. I want to see if it's going to be constant voltage as we move up the throttle, or is it going to kind of be confused? I don't know. Okay, there. And I think we're good. So if we hit the throttle a little bit, that should go up. Or down. See what happens here. But that might be accurate. Maybe the maybe it's reading a five volt reference, maybe. So with the key off, that might be a five volt. I'm I'm assuming. I'll try this again because that was bad connection. All right. So yeah, 4.9. So I bet when that thing's off, it should be about five volts. Then as the RPMs rev up, the voltage should go down because closer to, uh, you know, no volts. At least that's what I'm assuming now anyway. So that's about five volts which I wonder if it should be at five volts exactly. Um, let's see, we could always unplug that and check the PIDs on the front side when the sensor is not plugged into it. All right, we'll try this again. Like I said, folks, still learning. We're still learning. Four point four five three point nine grams a second. 
this is hot under here, so I don't know how long I'm going to hold this. We'll go ahead and steady our RPMs up and just see if, ouch, see if we see anything glitching or... Yeah, it's hot. Hold on a second. I'll try to use this screwdriver. Alright. All right. All right, so now I unhooked the connector again. I front probed it. Um, we're just gonna see if uh, we get a, you know, full five volts out of the PCM when just the, ooh, just the ignition's on. And indeed we do. So full five volts there. Of course, there's no mass airflow reading on there. Um, so yeah, so a full five volts is being supplied to this. Um, this thing, I don't know if it's normal for it to not read the full five volts. Uh, here comes the rain. Um, but, hmm. And I'm debating on where they're going, if I should just go get another one or not anyway. And then seeing if we get the same uh, same result or not I mean they're cheap at the junkyard so I don't mind really wasting the money on it so at least we know that we got our four or five volts um, all right so it's been a couple hours later we um, pulled our intake tube back off and we got our mass airflow sensor back out and you know this is the one that's been in this car it's backwards it was backwards but you know facing forward I don't know so we got another one um, it is used it came off of either an 03 or an 04 rendezvous um, and um, I was looking at these uh, obviously we're gonna clean this one but I was looking at these a little bit ago when I just got them back and if we look at the the wires and such I don't know if it's really gonna make all that much of a difference but you know there's stuff on those bars that are going across you know uh, that could be stuff from the air being forced in through this side instead of the proper side and this side here on the, the newer one doesn't really have those have any markings in there um, so I don't know if maybe that is playing a part in the readings. Um, this one looks like the wires, you know, uh, some of the ones that I looked at had black spots on them, which means they were probably burned. This one looks okay. The one up here on this one, uh, it's hard to focus, but this particular one over here, I'm not touching it, but it looks like it's a little dark on the top and bottom. So I don't know, uh, but you know, we're gonna try it anyway. Hopefully this is a decent mass airflow sensor that we got. Um, I did buy a week's warranty with it, so I could take it back if need be. Um, I also got another one of these. This is a one that I pulled off of another Aztec. Um, as you can see, it's not really chowdered up around the edges like mine was. This is mine. You can see that it's deteriorating pretty decently. So I figured since I'm taking this off again, we might as well actually replace this. This sensor came with this. I'm taking it off and I'm putting my sensor back on. This is my sensor that I took off of mine. I think that's the air, um, intake air temp sensor maybe, 
or intake air control. It's one of those two. Um, but yeah, so that's that's it's in there. We're gonna push that back in. And uh, yeah, so first things first, uh, we'll go ahead and spray this down with the mass air flow cleaner. Um, I'm going to clean the new tube with some brake clean that I have left. And we'll hook it up and see if hopefully it's gonna be okay, I hope. All right, so we got this one in place now. Everything's hooked up. Swapped uh, our air intake air temperature sensor. sensor. Like I said, I think that's what that is. Got this uh, crankcase hose pushed into the valve cover and here. Uh, the intake tube was a little bit better getting on, probably because it wasn't snagging on this dry rotted rubber. So. Now obviously I'm not getting rid of our old mass airflow sensor just in case. I mean at least I know it, it works to an extent anyway. Um, let's see, well first of all we gotta hook up the Tech 2 again and then let's see if maybe it's gonna make a difference in how it runs. Is it gonna run better? We'll let it warm up, we'll take it for a drive and see if this transmission thing clears up or not. First of all, all right, let's take this, gotta power it up, take it outside. It's getting windy. I've been rained on twice today. All right, diagnosis 01 MPV powertrain 3.4 without air pump, all wheel drive. Let's see if we have any DTCs. I know the misfire one was back. The um, transmission learn adapt or something was up, and our engine oil pressure circuit. All right, here we go. Uh, no service engine light right away. Alright, so this mass airflow sensor is running at about 5 grams a second. Engine loads at 21, 22. It's got to bog down, of course. Uh, fuel, long term fuel trim, negative 3. Still about where it was right at the moment. It's still got to get warmed up obviously. Are we in closed loop yet? We are in closed loop. Uh, fuel trim learn is enabled. The wind is picking up. Mass airflow sensor is at 5 grams a second. So I'll let it run for a little bit. Um, I think our other mass airflow was reading once it was at idle, it was somewhere in the threes, upper threes, lower fours, I think. We're at the upper fours and lower fives right now. All right, so I'll let it sit here and do its thing, and I'll get back with you guys. All right, so we've been sitting here. It's been running for about six minutes, I think, and uh, we've had a total of 764 misses on that cylinder three. Yeah, we're at six minutes now. So, you know, the misfire condition is still there. Um, it's not really acting any differently, other than, I don't know. Oh, wow, we are at zero long term. Wow. Okay. Uh, where's our map sensor reading? We are. 3 point, yeah, 3.7, 3.8 grams a second. That's interesting. Almost perfect, man. All right, well, I think it's pretty well warmed up. Let's go ahead and take it out, see if... Uh, the transmission is going to shift any differently. Hopefully it is better. 
Uh, we'll also see if it changes any of our fuel trim data. But it's at long term, what, zero, negative one. That's, that's really good compared to how it's been. All right, so it doesn't seem to be shifting as bad. Um, I've been out here for maybe about 10 minutes or so. Um, I've been giving it some hard acceleration, kind of the same thing I did yesterday. Um, the shifts don't seem to be as hard. Um, so I'm gonna keep driving it for a little longer and um, seeing if that gets any better or if it gets any worse. But I mean, I guess right now I can say there is a, uh, a slight improvement and it's really windy, geez. So there's a slight improvement. Um, so I'm just gonna keep on trucking ahead for a little bit and see what happens. So far, here's what we did. We've been driving around. The harshness was still there. I still heard a whine coming from the transmission, it sounds like, with the window down. So I'm driving. I'm checking the DTC or DCTs. No. DTCs, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, and that one code, P1811, was still sitting in the OBD2 system. So I cleared all the codes while we're driving, and now I'm, I'm here in a residential neighborhood where every block has a stop sign. And the wine on the transmission lightened up, and this thing is shifting back to normal. Um, so once I cleared the code and got it out of the, the thing, maybe it prompted the uh, PCM to maybe relearn some of the, the sequences or something based on new data. But uh, it is it is actually shifting really well right now. I'm at a dead end, so I got to turn. So I'll keep driving and I'll take it back out on the uh, other roads. Yeah, it's, it is, it almost feels like it's back to normal right now. So, I'm gonna keep driving it. Yeah, it is not, <laughs> it's, it's not. <laughs> there are certain instances, I do believe, where, now that I think about it, where you have to reset a code to, uh, you know, to kind of clear the problem or to get something to relearn. Because um, if the code's still present, it's probably still stuck in that particular setting, maybe with uh, certain, certain functions. Yeah, it feels a lot better. That's amazing. Um, I don't think the other mass airflow sensor that was on here was letting that code clear because I did try to delete them a few times um, But if that mass airflow sensor was really acting up then it probably was giving the wrong information and confusing the PCM or, uh, or, or whatnot as far as the transmission sequences, so I think this mass airflow that we put on here at the moment is doing what it should be doing. I want to turn down here. Eh. I was looking at transmission data, make sure we weren't overheating or anything. The transmission is at 190. It's not climbing very fast, so that's good. Um, yeah, it, it feels like it's it's shifting the way that it, it, it has been before before our whole mass airflow situation. So I'm gonna drive it home. Uh, keep an eye on it still, and I think I'm gonna wrap it up. I think I think we're good All right, so we just pulled back in the driveway try to snake around the trash can and the fusion There we go All right. All right, so let's check our data um, Yeah, Transmission at 192 coolant temps at 204. It's all right Back out of here um, let's, let's check to see if any codes came back, particularly that transmission code. None of them came back. It doesn't misfire until it's actually sitting at idle, it seems. Under a load, it seems to be alright. Like right now, I feel it shaking, so we'll probably have that P01 
P0300 come back. So we'll check it once more when we're done. Let's check our fuel trim data. So it's at negative two, negative three. Still not too bad, still not bad. Uh, I'm really surprised that it stayed at zero for a while. Uh, SR flow is at 3.5. So that seems like it's reading a little bit lower than what the other one was. Maybe the other one was reading a little high because it was more toward 4 if I'm not mistaken. The map sensor looks like it went down maybe one or two digits from yesterday. Up oh, long term's going back down to negative six now. Injector pulse width, I've noticed yesterday it was in the threes, we're at the in the twos now. So fuel delivery probably has uh, slowed down. No, maybe sp sped up. No, if it's slowed down, it's probably cutting fuel off faster. That's that's what I'm thinking. Because if it's two point, yeah, I think I'm thinking of that right. It's not open as long. That's that's what I'm assuming that is. I could be wrong, but like I said, I'm still figuring this stuff out too. Some mass airflow. Still sitting in the mid threes. It is hot out here. I noticed the coolant temp is up pretty high, but I think the fans just kicked on. It's coming down. It's about where it should be anyway. All right, so I think for the most part, our fuel trims are still sitting in a really good spot. I mean, still not perfect I'm sure that misfire still has something to do with it um, that's my guess we still have no DTC's at the moment so I'm gonna go ahead we'll shut it off real quick flip this back on it's probably gonna pick up the um, sensor for the engine oil pressure so we'll get out of here we'll just refresh everything no okay I'll take it for now uh, so I think that's it guys I guess to answer the question as far as you know how the transmission acts when it comes to a mass airflow sensor I'm going to say yes um, if your mass airflow sensor is acting funny uh, if it's dirty, if it needs cleaned, or just overall replaced, there's a chance that, yeah, it's going to affect the way your transmission is acting. Um, your transmission needs all of that information from that mass airflow sensor to calculate load and sequence, uh, you know, your shift times and whatnot, um, depending on acceleration and all of that stuff. So, uh, I'm yeah, like I said, I'm going to call it a fix for now. Um, we seem to be in good shape. Um, the next thing on the list, obviously, is the misfire, and I'll take it. Um, like I mentioned in the last vlog, I've got the GM Tech 2 for a while, so this will still be in my possession for a little while. So over the course of driving this thing over the next few days, if that service engine light pops back on, we'll rescan it. Um, but I think the codes that were in there don't set the service engine light right away. Um, so maybe in a few days, I'll just hook this back up and I'll see if anything has been stored. But I think that's it. Um, I think we finally nailed it. So again, if your transmission's acting funny like that, check the mass airflow sensor, clean it. Uh, that can of mass airflow sensor is just a couple bucks. Make sure you use nothing other than mass airflow sensor cleaner. Or in this case, if your mass airflow sensor was put in backwards for God knows how long, it's probably been like that for years and you know all the stuff probably collected on the wrong side of the the sensor maybe replace it 
Uh, I paid $10 for that mass airflow sensor from the junkyard plus $5 for the week warranty. So $15 and I'll leave it in there for as long as I can until, you know, if I don't have to get another one, then I won't. I'll leave it in there. So enough talking, guys. I want to thank you for joining me. If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe. Also, check out teespring.com slash door slash Mike's Vehicle Spotlight for all of your MVS and vlog merchandise. That is it. I'm going to go get cleaned up, and I'm going to make some leftover pasta from the other night because I'm hungry. So I'll see you guys next time. Thank you again for watching. Take care.